Hey guys, it's uh, Stephen Freeborn here from FreebornTrainingSystems.com and real quick, I just want to drop a tip on you about how you can use the power of the subjective norm to make change, changing your behavior easier. And the idea of the subjective norm comes from a theory in psychology known, uh, it was originally known as the theory of reasoned uh, action, but now it's uh, known better as the theory of planned behavior, uh, which the, the, the latter kind of expanded on the former, but uh, in just, just, in, in just part of the idea is that uh, if you look favorably on a behavior and other people, uh, kind of significant others in your life look favorably on that behavior, there's a very strong likelihood you're going to do that behavior or take that action. So what that tells us is, is that if we want to take on a new behavior or change our current behavior, we want to get involved uh, with significant others or an environment where that new behavior is the subjective norm. Right? If we get involved in a place, say you're trying to exercise more, if you get involved in a group of people who already exercise all the time and already and view exercise as very beneficial and favorable, the likelihood that you're actually going to follow through and take action on your exercise is very high. Uh, there are some, and that's where the theory of planned, planned, uh, planned behavior comes in. Is it kind of expands? There's kind of another barrier uh, to entry sometimes as far as engaging that behavior. But in most cases, um, and it, it, to simplify, we can use that subjective norm, and we can influence it by controlling the community we surround ourselves with. So trying to find a place where we can engage with a group of people who are already doing what we want to do and look very, look very favorable on what we want to do. And that's going to rub up, rub off on us. It's going to allow us to practice that behavior long enough for it to become habitual with us and just another thing that we do on a daily basis. So don't forget the power of subjective norm. That subjective norm can not only help you uh, learn new behaviors, new beneficial behaviors, but it also can be very powerful in that it can hold you in detrimental behaviors and old behaviors that you want to get rid of. So it might not only be creating a new subjective norm for yourself by getting involved with a community of people who are doing the behavior you want to do, but it also might mean removing yourself from an old subjective norm with a group of people who are doing what you don't necessarily want to be doing or what might be detracting from what your over, uh, overall goal is. So. Uh, again, to recap, the subjective norm uh, basically states that that is created by what is it in that environment that people do all the time, and do they look favorably on that thing they do all the time? That's the subjective norm. And what you want to do is go find a subjective norm that now fits your new behavior goal. All right? So if it's exercise, join a gym, go to a group at X class. Join a local walking club, join a local running club. If it's uh, you want to cook more meals at home, then you need to go find a cooking class, sign up, be around people who like to cook, who know how to cook, who value cooking, who make meals at home because all their views will rub off on you and you will want to engage in the behaviors that they find valuable uh, because they will give you positive regard. And we all as humans uh, kind of would like to have some positive regard from other human beings. So uh, it's just a way for us to kind of leverage what we know about our own psychology to not have to kind of strong arm this change process. Uh, so I hope that helps. Um, don't forget about the power of subjective norm. It can be evil. It can be good. Depends on how you use it and whether you're conscious of it. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you guys are kicking ass, having a great day, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I will talk to you guys later.